so in this tutorial i'm going to look at uh, i'm going to discuss convolution um convolution in matlab and octave uh, and uh, like i said uh, before uh, octave or matlab can only work with discrete time sequences so we will only deal with convolution of discrete time uh, sequences and in addition to that uh, we will only look at finite duration uh, sequences because you can't uh, define infinite infinite uh, sequences uh, in octave or matlab that would require a lot of memory okay so let's get into octave and before i actually get into convolution i'd like to um, introduce you to two more functions i forgot about these the last time and uh, the first one is called ones and the second one is called zeros okay uh, these define matrices consisting of either only ones or only zeros okay so if you want a 3 cross 3 matrix you just say 1 3 comma 3 okay and it will it will actually generate uh, a matrix of ones or if you want zeros you will generate zeros okay that's what it does and this is required for uh, this is required for let's say um, defining a pulse or a step step uh, step function right a unit unit step function so the the syntax is you say ones or you say zeros the first argument is the number of rows the second argument uh, you, you can have also just just number of rows okay so the second argument is the number of columns okay if you want a 3d matrix you can have another you can have a third argument if you want a four dimensional matrix you can go to the fourth argument and so on uh, we will only be interested in a column vector for now so let's just say so the first argument will obviously just be one and let's define a pulse of width 5 and a pulse also should consist of of some number of zeros so let's just call this pulse equal to ones zeros 1 comma 45 let's let, let the entire thing be of length 50 okay and i need square brackets okay and this is our pulse and let's just quickly stem plot the pulse okay and this is our pulse right all right now convolution let's move on to convolution so to convert to signals we will need an impulse response so let me just take a quick example let me take a quick example of of, of an impulse response so let me just take some arbitrary numbers here so minus 10 20 30 minus 5 and let's just put another number 16 okay and this is h and let's use x equal to let's let's use a small smaller sequence of so minus two three seven okay and that's it okay and our y will be equal to the convolution of h and x right now if you notice here h has a length of five okay and x has a length of three now what uh, now what uh, what happens is when we uh, convolve to finite duration discrete sequences the the length of the convolution will be 5 that is the length of this plus the length of this which is 8 and minus 1 so the length of this would be 7 okay and we will actually check that i will actually leave this as it is so you can see we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 uh, 7 uh, 7 samples right and now we'd want to uh, plot this but we also want to plot h of h of n and that is h and x right and to do that it would be more convenient if we had everything on one on one on uh, on one on one figure right so we use something called a subplot and the first argument of this is the number of rows we want three rows okay and we want one column and let's look at the first figure and you'll actually see what this means okay so this three this corresponds to three rows you'll find actually two more figures coming below this there's only one column and this is the first figure right so we have so now we can just do stem and let's just plot the impulse okay impulse response we'll move on to the next plot and you can see we saw we see a box below it and let's plot x okay finally move to the third figure and plot y and you can this is this is a lot more convenient and you can see there are seven samples three samples here five plus five plus three is eight minus one seven okay great 
let's look at a little a slightly more complicated sequence and uh, we'll also look at um, uh, a problem with a problem with convolution okay before that let's just do a simple sequence uh, let's let's see uh, let's see the the convolution of two units uh, unit steps but with a difference in amplitude so let's just say h equals um let's say this okay let's let's let h equal our pulse okay okay h equals our pulse okay and let x equal ones one comma fifty okay and this is a pulse uh, don't don't think of this as a unit step just think of this as a pulse for now okay and y equals uh, convolution of h and x okay and now let's just do the entire subplot stem so i'm just going to do this in one step stem h of n uh, subplot 3 comma 1 comma 2 stem x of n you can actually do all of this in one line subplot 3 comma 1 comma 3 and stem y of n okay i hope i didn't make any different mistakes okay what did i do wrong here ah uh, I, I didn't call this variable names ah okay sorry about that okay great so this is our this is our convolution okay now let's look at uh, an exponential an exponential um, impulse right so let's say h is equal to um, okay so first so this would be let's say this is minus uh, okay first we need we need a time base over here so n equals 1 to 50 okay let's say h is equal to um, minus 0 0.7 raised to the power of n okay we need dot uh, over here because we need to do an element by element by element operation okay and that's it this is our h let's let's use a unit step function this time so let u equal ones from 1 to 50 okay and we we want to find the step response so let's say the step response y is equal to convolution of uh, convolution of h and u right okay and now let's do the same plot okay i will have to change this to u and if you notice um, we see we see this uh, we, this, uh, we see this sort of garbage over here only these values are actually correct okay only values from 50 to 100 is correct and the reason for that is um this is not really a step uh, step response this is uh, a step a step a unit step should be of infinite duration but our duration is only 50 so the valid valid values will be only from 0 to 50 so we would actually want to discard these uh, discard these samples so let me say y1 equal to y from 51 to 100 okay and this should be brackets like this did i get this syntax right uh, i got it wrong uh, it should be 99 sorry so it should be 99 this should be 50 to 99 okay great let's do the stem plot again sub plot again and this time i should get it right so this is our convolution so when you are actually doing convolution um, and uh, you're doing convolution with let's say uh, infinite sequences you want to do it with infinite sequences make sure that you chop off uh, the invalid values okay all right so this is convolution and i would very quickly want to show you something uh, in case you're interested in uh, there is another tool called scilab okay i don't know if it's skylab or scilab so let me just open it and I'll very quickly demonstrate. Uh, this can this can uh, do something in continuous time, but uh, and and it's got something that's similar to Simulink and MATLAB. So um, it's called XCOS. Let me just open that. Okay, and why this is interesting is we can actually work with block diagrams, and it makes more sense. So you you're free to try this on your own. I just like to introduce this to you. 
um, I'm just going to show you an integrator so continuous time systems integral okay we will need a sink our sink will be our scope okay and we will need sources so let's say we want to find the integral of a step function we know the integral of a step will be a ramp okay we should see this and we will also need an event gen generator okay so okay so these are uh, one second okay so these are my components oh, sorry let me try that again okay great Okay, I'm not just I'm not gonna make it very neat. And okay, uh, anything. Okay, it's not very neat, but it should it should serve our purposes. Okay, I'm not really going to go into much detail. Uh, there are two inputs. Okay, so we've connected this to one of the inputs, the other one to, uh, to the second input. So we've connected the input of this to the input of the scope. And the output of our system, our integrator, to the input, one of the in, um, to the other input of the scope, and I will want uh, y max to be a be a bit larger. So let's let's say this is one. Let this, let's say this is 100, and let's let's just say this is 100 as well. Uh, or let's just say this is 10. Okay. And uh, I would want my simulation to get over. I mean to stop in let's say in 100. And in a hundred in uh, hundred seconds, let's say, and all this is fine. And let's just see what this gives us, right? We should be seeing our ramp, okay? So if you if you saw that carefully, let let me reduce the simulation time. Let's mm -hmm. let the simulation time let let be one let just be ten, and we should see a quicker ramp, right? Okay, great let me let's make this a little more visible let, let the refresh period be 10 okay and now if you plot this this is our step so you can see the integral of the step is a ramp okay and uh, you can play around with this uh, using block diagrams can be a lot more intuitive and it's a lot more interesting i'm not really good at it i just learned this today and uh, so you can explore Skylab. Uh, the command line has similar uh, has a similar uh, syntax to MATLAB. It's not exactly the same. There are similarities. I'm not sure if one is defined. Oh, it's defined. Great. If I say one comma ten, I should get ones, right? So you can you can also explore Skylab. Uh, I didn't mean to deviate from this, but I just wanted to show you this block diagram uh, block diagram um, tool. Okay. And that's it for this tutorial.